When it cures everything, college football week 12 previews brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six awesome sports books down there. They got Samstown, Horseshoe, Hollywood, uh, Gold Strike, First Jackpot, Fitz Casino. Nailed it again. I'm Damn. swapping up the order. Nailed it again. But they got six of them down there, and we've been to all of them, and they are all fantastic. You can get more information on them over at tunicatravel.com. You can find more information about us over at winningcureseverything.com. If you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. If you're listening on the podcast, hit that subscribe button. You can find us on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, all the wonderful things. Let's jump into it. Game day. You think they're going to the wrong game this week? Nope. Really? No, I don't think they're going to the wrong game. I think you're probably right. I think uh, I think anybody that has a choice between going to Orlando or going to Brooklyn, New York in the middle of November, yeah, I'm probably going to go to Florida too. But I'm not talking about that. I think it's the right game. At some point in time, we have to start respecting the AAC. Yeah. Yeah, and I, it, this would be the It's game. a better conference than two other power conferences that we respect all kind of a lot. So we need to, we need to hold the hell on. And if they're not better than those two conferences, Pac-12 and Big 12, they're right there with them. Yeah, those okay. two conferences aren't and far honestly, enough I think, better I think than them. Probably, like I think the Big 12 is better than than the Pac-12. I don't know that. I, uh, that. I think the the conference that you're looking at is probably the ACC. ACC because there's bad. a lot of AAC teams that have beaten ACC teams beaten this year. Them. That's right. So yeah, I mean it, it, that's that's what we need to be looking at. But we are gonna start out in Brooklyn. There, there is a power six, and and we need to start talking about it, by the way. Well, we will talk about that in the next game. Okay. This one, though, we're going to talk about a team that's not even in a conference and a team that's in the ACC. Notre Dame, nine-point favorite. Jesus' conference. Uh, Notre Dame is a nine-point favorite, quote-unquote, at home in Yankee Stadium against Syracuse, over under 61 and a half. Looks like a lot of points. May not be. Saturday, 1.30 p.m. on NBC. It's that weird time slot. They got their own. That Everybody else in college football is like 11, 2.30, 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock, and out. Right? And then Pac-12 is like, we call 9.30. Well, Notre Dame's like, we're better than all of you, and we're going to take 1.30 for ourselves. Nobody else is allowed 1.30. Like I, I really don't think there's another game on at one thirty, at all. Nope. There's one at one o'clock, but that's on the ATT or AT and T Rocky Mountain Network. Uh, let's see what else we got at one thirty. Georgia State at Appalachian State. That's an ESPN three game, and that's it. That's all you got. Notre Dame. Let me let me give you this stat. Okay. Syracuse. Their offense averages five point eight eight yards per game. Sounds like a lot, right? That's a lot. That's number 60 in the country. That's not as much as I thought. Their defense, however, gives up 5.91 yards per play. Mm. That is number 87 in the yeah, country. Yeah, that's so weird. They're 8-2. and two. They are 8-2. and two. And they and give they, up more yards. They than get they... outgained on a per-play basis. That is so weird. And it's that's... not like they've got – usually you would see that if they got, like, blown out in one of those games and that would throw the numbers off, but they didn't. They didn't. As a matter of fact, they've blown out a lot of teams. They've blown out a lot. That's a that's a weird thing. Mm-hmm. It's like, it, man, you guys must be dinking and dunking all the time, every play. That that yeah, Ugh. okay. So I mean, if and if you think about it, like I haven't seen Syracuse like with a lot of explosive plays. So, I mean, it, the numbers can be skewed if if you give up explosive plays and you never create any. But I, I didn't look up what the explosive play percentage is, all that kind of mess. Notre Dame's offense averages 6.1 yards per play. That's pretty they good. are number 45 in the country. Their defense, even better than that. They give up 4.56 yards per play. That is good for number 10 in the country. That's why they're almost a double-digit favorite. Yeah. Most books, they are a double-digit favorite. I saw yeah. this morning they were 10 points. The lines that we have are brought to you by First Jackpot sure. down in Tunica, Mississippi. Uh, this line is as of this morning. So it might have jumped even more. I know it opened at eight, if I'm not mistaken, and then it's it's been bet all the way up. So, um, what do you make of this? I like Syracuse in this game. If I had to play one side or the other, give me the points. I like Dino Babers a lot. I, I think wonder what that be prepared. I wonder what that that weather is going to do. It's going to be their cold. Offense. 
Promo. But if they're not really explosive, then what does it matter? Yeah, I was about like, to say that, that I don't know. That, I don't know. I, don't get me wrong. When I say I like Syracuse, I think Notre Dame's going to win the game. I like Notre Dame to go undefeated. I think this is going to be a test for them. Syracuse, remember, Syracuse at Clemson took them all the way to the brink. And I understand we could, it was against a uh, a third string quarterback. We they're got the that. ones that put that third string quarterback in there. That's that's true. I mean, it's not like they just put the third string in her on purpose. No, they, they, they just we want to play this way. Yeah, they they, they knocked they out knocked the, them out. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, that defense they they they're not a great defense. But I just I think they played really well. Dino Babers has kind of caught my eye. He's just a really good coach. Oh yeah, he, I mean at Bowling Green, his offenses were outstanding. They put up a ton of points. He uh, wants to be taken serious in the AAC ACC. If if they pull out this upset, he he will ooh, be taken serious. Yeah, if they win this game, that's a New Year's Six Bowl written all over them. Yeah. Oh yes. Yes. I all over. That. Let's uh let's move on from that one. Uh oh, rotation numbers. We've had people requesting rotation numbers, by the way. So we're going to try it on the previews and just see if anybody notices. Okay. Uh, rota- uh number three sixty seven for Syracuse. Number three sixty eight for Notre Dame. Uh, Cincinnati number three fifty three rotation number. UCF number three fifty four. For those that don't know what a rotation number is, by the way, that's the little number on the sports books. Uh, so when you get a sheet like this, you got a little number out beside it. So because the games are in just all kind of crazy order, so this way you can just go right down your sheet, figure out exactly where it is if you want to bet it. Uh, if you go up to the counter, this line will change by the time you go to Tunica. I promise. So go yeah, up we to the attendant. this on a Tuesday night. Yeah. So. so go up to your attendant, ask her what the update is for whatever the rotation number is, and she will tell you what the latest line, latest over, all that kind of stuff is. Cincinnati number three fifty three, UCF number three fifty four, UCF minus seven and a half. Now I believe that this one opened at eight and a half and then got bet down. A lot oh, of man. sharps that jumped in on Cincinnati on this one. Over unders fifty eight and a half. It's Saturday, six thirty PM. It is the ABC primetime game in Orlando, Florida. See, we disagree with that first statement that you just made. I disagree with that. I don't think it was Sharps that bet that game down. You think it was the public? I don't think it was the public. I think there's a lot of I don't think there are any specific people. I think the people this is is the power five elitist. I think the people that think Though the AAC, all the haters of UCF are all going to be on Cincinnati. It's the same reason everybody bets. Oh, I guess they don't really bet against Bama. But, like, like everybody hates one team. All the Power 5 elitists hate UCF and want to see them go down. That's where all the money is going to go. I don't know that that means actually people think one way or another. I think there are just a large group of people that bet a lot of college football that just want to see UCF fall. Yeah, that could make sense. I mean, I, okay, I'm with you. I'm with you. Uh, this is the second most likely upset of the afternoon. Yeah, based on based one on, parameter that you pull up. No, no, no. Based on, like, all of the FBS stats. That's right? what I'm saying. Like, this this thing that you look at to get metrics from. Which is a hundred and uh, whatever different... Uh, Different things. I'm gonna pull this thing up because I, I, I forgot part of my, part of my numbers here. Um, but yes, you are you are correct on that. It is uh, something that I pull up. There it is, right there. Forty six point five eight percent chance for Cincinnati to pull the upset here. And what is giving you that information so people actually know what so you're looking at and you're not? This just is uh, my my teams better dot com. It has all of the FBS ranks along with the uh, the numbers, like the average numbers. And it is, let's see. UCF is better in 21 of 35 different stats. Their FBS average rank is 40. The FBS average rank for Cincinnati is 42, and they won 14 of the stats. So 21 to 14, and... Honestly, their FBS average rank is like really freaking close, 40 to 42. So the fact that this is about a touchdown is about right there, you know. Uh, UCF is predicted to win this. Uh, the confidence meter for this site is 53.42% for UCF. So it is not a uh, 
this is not a going away kind of win for them. Uh, Cincinnati, but it's not supposed to be. It's where game day is. Game day is mo- not supposed to go to places with 20-point spreads. Agreed. Agreed. Otherwise, they, they probably would have been at, like, Duke Clemson. So, <laughs> I mean, they, they were at Boston College last week. But that, that's, that's, but that was the that's only – the best game there because there was yeah. no good games. Uh, so, Cincinnati, they averaged 5.98 yards per play. That's number 56. Here's the kicker, though. This is why they've been such a good team under Luke Fickle. They give up 4.3 yards per play. That is number six in the country. Not too shabby. The, uh, let's see, yards per play for UCF, completely flip-flopped. They are number eight in the country. They average 7.10 yards per play. They give up 5.28. That's number 44. So, I would have to imagine the UCF will win this ballgame. Big stage. First time in, like, Real, real prime time spot for them. You'd have to imagine that, right? Like, how, how do you feel about this? It's in my gambling picks. Ah, okay, okay. Well, we, you know what? We can just move right on in. Go watch the gambling picks segment. Iowa State, rotation number 417, Texas 418. Texas, a three point favorite at home. The over under is 49. Saturday, 7 p.m. And if you want to watch this game, you got to get the Longhorn Network, baby. So dumb. The, it, so this dumb. is like the third most interesting game of the day. This is this is why the Big 12 sucks. And and it's right on here. the Longhorn Network. You get what you get when you get in bed with a school like Texas and you let them do whatever the hell they want. Now, I will tell you this. Uh, you can watch this on the ESPN app. So those of us with Apple TVs and whatnot, yes, you will be able to watch this. You can actually watch this and Cincinnati UCF on the same app. So, do that. You can also watch Duke Clemson on the same thing at the same time. So, whatever. Um, But, yeah, this one's at 7 p.m. This is the most likely upset. Texas is a three-point favorite. They are ranked number 19 in the latest CFP. Iowa State is ranked number 22. Is that right? No, 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 no. That changed today, didn't it? Texas is like 16. Texas moved up to 16. So, Texas is... Oh, no. Texas is 15. Iowa State is 16. 16. There you go. There you go. So, really, would this really be an upset? Eh. I mean, the point spread, yes. Uh, Mm. Iowa State is a... They have a 55.03% chance of an upset here. I don't call anything less than three points. Our three points are are smaller. Even four points, really, an upset. Yeah. If I'm going to say... If you're going to tell me, give me a big upset... I'm going to say, like, money lineups. Like, the point spread has to be five or bigger for me to actually classify that as an upset. That's just, like, my personal stance. Iowa State averages 5.71 yards per play. Texas averages 5.63. So they're pretty similar there. However. One place is way better on defense. Texas, another one of those boys that uh, that gets outgained. A lot. Five point out seven yards. Or five, five point out. 5.87 yards per play is what they give up. Iowa State, 4.87. Iowa State's really good on defense. How do you – I mean, it, does the fact that this game is in Austin do anything for you? It does. I actually think Texas has a pretty good home field advantage now. Uh, Herman's done a really good job building that part of the program and getting fans to actually need to – come and show up for the game. Dan Wetzel and those guys always joke about how Texas used to be a wine and cheese crowd. Uh, they're not anymore. Um, so I, I think they are going to get some home field boost, but I actually think that's baked into the line. Cause I think, I think it is. Too. I think if this is a neutral site game, it's a three point game. And I think if it's at Iowa state, it's probably a two and a half, three point game. Yeah. The other way. I mean, I, I think the line is right. I think this is a dead, even matchup the way they, they match up. And and there's a reason it's, it's, it's the two most Big Twelve teams upset. that are not very Big Twelve ish. That's right. That's it, exactly is, right. It's two teams that like to run the football, that like to play defense, and they can score if they need to. Now here's the difference in what I think about these two teams and my logic going into this game. Texas is built to beat Big Twelve teams, but they struggle when they play teams that are not Big Twelve and they hit them in the mouth. Iowa State while they are built to beat Big 12 teams, is also used to playing Iowa, the complete opposite of a Big 12 team. That is true. And other teams like that, they play them close, and they're not afraid of them. They can play any style ball. 
I would give the edge and the lean to Iowa State if it was me picking this game. I'm not. I'm not. It's not one of my gambling picks. I'm. I'm staying away from it. But if I if do, I, had to I pick, agree with everything that you're saying. I think Iowa is more prepared to not play Big Twelve football and actually get dirty and and play down in the mud. Last year, this game was at uh, Ames, and. It was the the last game of whoever the quarterback was before they they swapped over. That's right. Um, and it the Iowa State like I actually had money on Iowa State last year mm-hmm. because I I fully believed in Matt Campbell at that point. That's right. It was like the fourth game of the year and Texas beat them seventeen to seven. And after that is when Campbell and that bunch started just housing teams they beat Oklahoma after that they yeah, beat, that was early in the season yeah. and it totally changed their season totally changed the season so I wonder what it is like this year in kind of a revenge spot I guess yeah, you could some say. Of that. maybe a little bit uh, but it is in Austin so that might be kind of difficult over under is only 49 do you do you maybe go over on that one no two teams that just like to hold on to the football I, I would bet the under if I don't think this is going to be a 50 point game I can understand that. I can understand that. All right, let's move on. Game number four. Speaking of points, West Virginia minus five at Oklahoma State. West Virginia rotation number 389, Oklahoma 390. Over under is 71. Saturday, 2.30 p.m., ABC. It is in Stillwater, Oklahoma State, coming off of uh, just a heartbreaking loss in Bedlam. Heartbreaking loss. They should have won the game. Uh I tell you this though, computers really seem to like Oklahoma State. Yeah, I mean they just went toe to toe with Oklahoma. They've got the fifth most likely upset odds. They uh, their confidence points are forty point five seven percent to win the game. I, I mean, I, look, I didn't even put stats down on this because like both offenses are are awesome. West Virginia's defense a little bit better. Uh, I mean, Will Greer looks really good. Taylor Cornelius has put up five hundred yards in some really big spots. I mean, where do we – is this a last team gets the ball? Like, wins the game kind of spot? or Yeah, it could be It could be Because this could like be a look-ahead spot for West Virginia. I, mean, I they, was just about to say, West Virginia's got more to lose here. A, the one thing that Oklahoma State has, and they had it over Oklahoma last week, and they've got it over West Virginia this week, they got nothing to lose. Yeah. I mean, they're like a four-loss team. Like, oh, okay, the five-loss team, like, who cares? We're just gonna we're just gonna throw everything we got at these teams and see if we can ruin somebody's day. See if we can just piss somebody off. And they might. And and they absolutely could. They could have done it last week. Quarterback makes one more play on that last play on to go for it for two. That's ball game, baby. Yeah. No, you're so, right. Um it wouldn't surprise this is and Stillwater, that crowd will be fired up because of how close the Oklahoma game was. I think if the Oklahoma game was a blowout. Then, then might maybe, would have taken a little shine fans, off this one. The fans say, "Ah, oh, we've lost five games, man. Let's. Do you want to go? Yeah, maybe we'll go. Stay first half. See how it goes." I don't think it's going to be that. I think people are going to be there, fired up. They're going to be smacking them paddles on the side of the the wall. I I think it's going to be a fun game. I agree with you. I agree. Let's jump over game number five. Duke number three thirty one. Clemson number three thirty two. Clemson is a twenty eight point favorite over the Fighting Cutcliffs. Over under is fifty seven and a half. Saturday, six p.m. ESPN. Uh, Clemson did not look great against Boston College, and I wonder if that was because of Boston College's quarterback going out, or maybe because it was cold, or I, I don't know what it was. It could have just been that they were actually playing a pretty decent team, and if that is the case, Duke is seven and three. They're a pretty decent team. Duke is a decent team. Clemson as well. has been known. To uh, struggle to, with decent teams. Well, I was going to say throw up all over themselves in spots like this, because um, they'll go out and beat the teams that they're supposed to beat, and they they will win big games and they'll cover big games, and and then they come home and they get relaxed and everybody tells them how wonderful they are, and then they lose to Pitt or they lose to Syracuse. Or they I don't lose to, I don't think they're in danger of losing this game, but I'll tell you this: Cutcliffe is a really good coach. They're gonna be prepared at Duke for this game. The other thing that you got to look at, I mean, I just don't understand this number being so big. It took a quarterback that has literally never taken a snap before, probably didn't take many in practice, for Boston College, 
and their offense was terrible. Their offense did nothing. They shut their offense out. But defensively, they st- the offensively, sorry, Clemson, they weren't able to score either. They got 20, and they had great field position the entire game. They had time of possession owned the entire game, and and they were struggling to move the ball. Total defense here. Duke is number 70 in total defense. So that does worry me a little bit. Um, yards per play, Clemson is number four in the country, 7.55. Duke only 5.74. They're number 68. Uh, opponents yards per play, Clemson is number one in the country, 3.75 yards per play. Duke is 5.51. That's number 57. Uh but again, it's it's not. It's thirty not points. The We're talking about twenty eight points. Yeah, that just seems like a ton. That's of, ridiculous against a team that is that is seven and three and that has shown up pretty well. And that's against, Alabama Citadel. Like Duke ain't Citadel. Yeah, I will say this: Clemson has just immeasurably more talent. No doubt. They've got immeasurably more talent than, but, than Syracuse. But will they give a crap enough to show up? They didn't They didn't do that to them. They got immeasurably more talent than Boston College, especially at the quarterback position when the Boston, BC's quarterback went down. Didn't do it to them. Will, will Clemson win the game? Yeah, probably. I don't, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not sniffing upset here. But, you're but talking will they about keep it within 20, four touchdowns? 28 points, man. I could see them keeping it within 28 points. That's insane. I think I think Duke will score at least a couple of times. Yes, and you're not shutting a David Cutcliffe coach team out. That guy's an offensive mind. I agree. He'll with you. figure a way to manufacture points. We got seven games in the honorable mentions. Tulane at Houston. Houston minus ten and a half. That is a Thursday night game. That line looks really big for a team that's lost two straight ball games. Then you game of picks. Yep. All right. Wisconsin at Purdue. Purdue minus five. Again, I don't know what happened to Purdue last week at Minnesota. That was uh, strange, we'll say. Uh, next game up, Memphis at SMU. SMU is an eight and a half point underdog at home on a Friday night. Uh, that is that line weirded me out. That's uh, that's a strange one, isn't it? Um, so, but that's that's your Friday night. That's probably going to be your best game on Friday night. Oh yeah, Friday it will be absolutely. Uh, Miami minus three and a half at Virginia Tech. Uh, man, two teams that have just fallen off the face of the earth. Virginia Tech needs to win this one and against Virginia to go to a bowl game because they had a game canceled in the middle of the year. Um, I mean, Mark Richt is five and five. Justin Fuente is four and five. This when we looked at the calendar to start out the th- season, I thought this was going to be. For we thought this AAC would be like game championship, ACC championship game. Yeah, uh, Virginia at Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech a six and a half point favorite over a pretty good Bronco Minnen Hall team. For, Georgia Tech has been rolling on folks though. Yeah, they have. They've I mean, won they, uh, like they four have, straight. They've been. Yeah, they've been. Killing they've been people. killing people. USC minus three and a half at UCLA. USC five and five. This is you got to win this game. Game. This is just a terrible football game. If if you're USC and you fire Clay Hilton, who do you go get? I don't know the answer to that, but we shouldn't be talking about this game. That's well. You bring it up because it's a uh, it's rivalry. It's care. Chip Kelly's first in the in the series. But that's it's a rivalry between two bad teams. Yeah, no, it absolutely is. And then San Diego State at Fresno State on Saturday night. That's that's a, a that's a pretty good ball game right that's there. A game. Uh, Fresno is a fifteen point favorite there. Who? That is your college football week twelve previews. We're giving you all of the numbers that you need to know to go be a winner down in Tunica, Mississippi. So go get some action in. Talk to your attendants. Get some updated lines and whatnot. Uh, this is just, like we said, a preview, a briefing, if you will. Go down there. TunicaTravel.com has got more information on all of their six wonderful sports books. You can find our picks, our previews, and our college football pick em contest over at winningcureseverything.com. Don't forget to go check out the gambling picks. <laughs>